Good morning, Jumpstart Nation. Happy Tuesday, praise God. It's a good day. It's a great day to be alive. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, hello, hello. Quick reminder, as you're jumping on, hit the share button. Share it, please, to your page. Make sure it goes public. And uh, let's get the word out. We've got some good, good news today, good word today. And I am excited. Praise God. <clears throat> Narcissa, I believe it was Narcissa. She'll be on later on. Good morning, Lindsay. Uh, good to see you. Good morning. Uh, also, a few months ago, I think it was Narcissa. She'll be on later. Gave me this book called Decree Your Today. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Carlos and Terry. Decree your today. Powerful. I haven't read the whole thing, so I can't endorse it. I will not endorse something I've not read completely, but it's full of de decrees and declarations. Um, and so, you know, for example, here's one called Favor Goes Before Me. As everybody's jumping on, I'm just going to, hey, Mary, good to see you. Um, so, for example, Favor Goes Before Me. Here, I declare the favor of God goes before me today. It is in my past, it is in my present, it is in my future. I declare Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is perfect and unchangeable. He always has been, he always will be. He is my Savior, I declare. Holy Spirit guides me into favorable pathways. Ooh, I like that. The Holy Spirit guides me into favorable pathways. That's a great declaration. So good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I bless your day. Uh, and this is, and I've kind of lost count, so some of you probably are, have, are probably doing the tongue-in-cheek with me. Remember, Rhea's the detailed lady, all right? So I think this is number 22 of talk to it, not about it. Talk to it, not about it. And I'm telling you what, the Spirit of God has is, is got the uh, pedal to the metal here, not want me to back off of this. It can't be something that we just play around with. What we're saying matters. Even in our conversations, we, it matters. Not, we don't get legalistic with it. We don't get all, you know, all stiff with, you know, being, becoming a confession cop and all that. But honestly and truly, we need to be very respectful and, and very aware of the power of our tongue. It is is the difference maker. It's the difference maker. Praise God. So uh, anyway, this is the book, uh, another good tool, Decree Your Today by um, Brent Luck, Pastor Brent Luck. And uh, it's, it's awesome. I like it. Here's one called Imagination and Extravagance. I declare my imagination is under the authority of the Word of God. My thoughts favor others and myself, for Christ is in my thoughts. I take captive every imagination to the obedience of Christ. I recognize the power within me. I recognize the power within me, believing I can have whatsoever I can think on or ask for or declare. I choose to think on things that edify and encourage. I choose to think on things that are exceeding abundantly beyond my natural expectation or capability of achieving. What a declaration. That's from Ephesians 3.20. If I can imagine it, God is way beyond it. If I can imagine it, God is still way beyond what I think is a big imagination. I stretch my imagination to think big, bold thoughts that make me tremble. For if I do not tremble at the extravagant heart of my father, I do diminish him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We could see, uh, remember a few weeks ago, uh, David said, bless the Lord, all my soul. He was, he was talking to a soul. And here, this is a declaration saying, my imagination is being stretched by the Spirit of God. My imagination is being stretched beyond its comfort zone, out of its comfort zone, to the point that I am trembling at what I'm imagining because only God could bring it to pass. I like that. I, I like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, let's, let's just do this while we're getting on. Let, let, let's, let's do a couple of declarations. Um, Psalm twenty two twenty eight. Talk to it, not about it. This is number 22. Psalm tw or Job twenty two twenty eight. I like this. So good morning, everybody. Good to see everyone. Make sure you chat it up. Say hello. 
uh, let, let us know you're there. Just a quick thumbs up. You, don't have, you have no idea how that encourages other people. And those of you that are being sort of silent, sort of in the background, if you're here live, let us know you're there. We need to know you're there. Praise God. It's so important. We need one another. And um, it's not just what we get on here and do individually. It's what we do together. By the way, I got a phone call from one of our Jumpstart, uh, from one of our Jumpstart Nation citizens. <laughs> and, uh, and I haven't had a chance to return her phone call, but uh, she'll be on later on. But apparently there has been a miracle and she is giving God the glory and the word of God, the glory, the speaking of the word of God, the glory, uh, a person who, uh, it's just been a miracle. So I'll give you more details on that. And, um, yeah, amen. Uh, I'll, yes, Joel, uh, I'll give you details on that miracle, but apparently there has been a medical physical miracle among the jumpstart nation. Praise God. Hey, Fanny, good to see you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see you, Reverend. Um, you know, so it seems in, it, your natural mind will tell you that your words are insignificant. That's just that carnal thinking. Um, it's, it's the way our culture's trained us. That's why pre-Christ, B.C., and even after Christ, you know, it's amazing to me the Christians that just use cuss words and curse words and just, just speak all kinds of stuff. And they just, they, they're just blowing off at the mouth. Not, and the reason they are is they do not understand the power that God has given them. They don't understand the authority. And when they dilute their words, man, they weaken their own words. It's to their own detriment, all right? It's to their own detriment. And I don't want to do that. I've done it. We've all done it. Come on. We've all, we've all played around with our words and used them haphazardly. But, you know, no more. No more. I, I just, I, I'm not in the mood to be weak. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to be defeated. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to be sick, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not in the mood to be unanointed. <laughs> I'm not in the mood uh, to lack joy. Man, Jesus paid for it all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, Colossians 1, 12, giving thanks unto the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Qualified us to be partakers, participators, partners, fully invested partners in the inheritance. In the inheritance. Glory to God of the saints in the light. We have an inheritance. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I want to tap into all that spiritual inheritance, mental, revelational, download inheritance, uh, emotional inheritance of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and long suffering and self-control, the physical inheritance of health, the financial inheritance of wealth, creating abundance for others while I'm creating wealth for myself. See, I'm not trying to get wealth. God has anointed you to create wealth. When you create wealth for others, you create wealth for yourself. It's a win-win. We're not trying to get wealth. See, Marxism, socialism says, I, I want your wealth. Give me your wealth. The kingdom of God is, God, you have anointed me to create wealth. You've anointed me to create wealth for others. And as, and as I serve others with my gifts and abilities and talents and build businesses and build ministries and write books and, and produce products and produce services, as I create wealth in serving others supernaturally, uh, it may look natural, but then I am creating wealth for myself. God has made you a wealth-creating being. You're, you're anointed and called to create spiritual wealth, mental wealth, emotional wealth, physical wealth, financial wealth. God has given you the gift and, and talent and ability to, uh, to create wealth. In fact, I was just listening to a, a podcast the other day, and this particular person was talking about how he helps people to transition out of joblessness because of COVID and uh, how to transition into better paying jobs. And he said, this one couple, they, uh, they were tired of barely making it. And so he said, I want to encourage you to call this company and get involved in counseling people regarding insurance. Because a lot of people that are getting 63, 64, 65, 
and with Medicaid, Medicare, and all that, they also need additional things to supplement it, but they don't know where to go and what to do, and there's so many options, they're overwhelmed, and he said there's a real need for people to work with insurance companies to counsel people on what products they need. And so they both started out, they both decided to do it. The first year, they made about 30000 a year each, 60000 total. The second year, they made about seventy. They weren't really good at it, so they made about 70000 a year each. In year eight, year eight, and he, had, he, has a, uh, he has a college degree. She doesn't. She has no college degree, no professional training other than what the insurance company trained them. In year eight, they both combined made over $500,000 a year. They were creating wealth for others, helping others find the right solution for uh, their later years with insurance. And in that, they created over $500,000 a year of wealth for themselves without a college degree. Listen, God knows how to get you where you need to go, but we gotta get outside of our thinking. We've gotta get outside of our thinking. You are created and anointed to create wealth. And in creating wealth for others, you create wealth for yourself. You don't want to get wealth, you wanna create it. I keep saying it over and over because the anointing keeps bringing it back over and over. Amen, he's hammering this. And wealth creation is more than just going and getting a job. Thank God for a job, we want a job. Everybody needs a job, I'm not saying that. But don't limit your potential by your paycheck. That should be your seed bag. Your paycheck should be your seed bag. Sow it. Sow out of your paycheck and expect, expect to harvest wealth. And the way it will come, the way wealth will come is not somebody necessarily putting a check in your mailbox. It's not necessarily your, your employer giving you a raise, even though those are ways God will use that. But as you sow seed and speak the word and sow the word of God, and speak the word like on Jumpstart Nation and, and speak prosperity and speak the blessing and speak the inheritance, God's gonna give you downloads of revelation on what you can do to serve others, to create wealth for them, and in doing so, creating wealth for yourself and your family. I'm telling you, you are one idea away from a completely changed life. You are one idea, one revelation, one Holy Ghost revelation away from doubling and tripling your wealth your income. And it will be something you love to do because you're gifted to do it. It'll be something you're good at because you're good at it. Uh, you may have to practice it a little bit, but I'm telling you what, God is putting you in a position right now. Ha, glory to God. Here we go again. Man, this prophetic anointing, that, that, that the mantle of the prophet manifested yesterday, it's coming again. God is putting you in a position right now in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this jobless, uh, 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 this jobless economic meltdown. God is putting you in a position right now to multiply financially. Glory. But it starts with your mouth. Then comes revelation. You sow seed, you sow financial seed. Then comes revelation, comes ideas. There are some of you that perhaps need to write a book. And that's gonna, that book will create wealth for other people. It serves people. You don't write the book to become wealthy. You write the book to create blessing and wealth for others. And when what you share on paper becomes a blessing and help, and wealth for others, it creates wealth for you. Start creating wealth. Start somewhere. Start building someone up. Amen. Start, call somebody, text someone, email someone, and bless them with, with revelation. We had a, just on a Jumpstart to yesterday, one of uh, the Jumpstart Nation uh, uh, people, I don't want to say who you are because I didn't give permission, so you can tell me. But they, and said that there was a person in another state, they called after yesterday's jumpstart about you sow in tears, you reap in joy. And this, this person, this believer in another state was so depressed, they could hardly get out of bed over the condition of the culture, the condition of the nation. And uh, so one of our jumpstarters called that person and shared the prophetic word from Psalm 126, that you know you've been reaping in prayer over the nation, you've been reaping, you've been sowing in prayer, sowing in tears, but the Lord says it's time to reap, glory to God, reap in joy. And she said that person was so encouraged and they said to them, I would probably not have gotten out of bed 
had you not called me. Wow, that is wealth creation. That's creating wealth. Glory to God. God has a called and anointed me, not, this is me, not you, to create wealth for others with my mouth. I make a living talking. <laughs> because, uh, you know, wealth creation, man, Lord, why are we doing this? Jumpstart Nation, listen, we're, we're going to decree this in a minute. Wealth creation, which is God's plan for all of us, is taking raw material, forming and developing it into something, and then delivering it. For example, for a builder, it's taking wood, concrete, electrical wire, pipes, drywall, windows and doors, raw material, and assembling it into a house. And then you make a profit from that because you just took raw materials and you created what you, your talent created wealth, a beautiful home for somebody else. They got the wealth of a beautiful home. You got the wealth of the profit. Now, what the Lord has called me to do is to take the raw material that's in this Bible, the words of God that's in this Bible, and allow the Lord to download revelation out of this word into my mind and heart in a way that it makes it accessible to other people. And so I take a raw material, the word of God, the spirit of God anoints me and re reveals his word to me. I deliver it. I speak it in a way that people go, oh, I've never seen that before. Or thank God I needed to hear that again. I knew that, but I needed to hear it again. And so I create wealth and it's creating wealth in your life. Amen. And I think before long, he's going to begin using my fingers to create books, written wealth. I'm listening very closely to that about some books that perhaps need to flow through me to others to help them and to bless them. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So say this out loud. I Say this out loud. Decree this. I am anointed to create wealth for others. And in creating wealth for others, I'm creating wealth for myself. It is a win-win solution. I decree and declare that Holy Ghost ideas, Holy Spirit revelation is downloading wealth-creating ideas into my mind and heart. Ideas that create wealth for others as I serve them, as I start a company or companies, as I write books, as I use my mouth to build up and edify, as I create products and services, when I hear those divine downloads, I have the divine faith to act upon them creating wealth for others, for the kingdom of God, and for myself. Praise God. What a declaration. Glory to God. What a declaration. That is awesome. Man, that is awesome. Hallelujah. So, Job twenty two twenty eight. This is number 22. We, we've already done this 21 times. Talk to it, not about it. Number 22. And we're, we're doing this based on what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty. 20. Remember, Jesus saw a fig tree. He went to get figs on off of it to eat it. He was hungry, found no figs. So he said to the tree, he said to the tree, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. All right? Looks like nothing happened, but he spoke to the tree. He didn't talk about the tree. He didn't come back to the disciples and say, man, that tree, that tree had no figs. Man, I'm starving. That tree had no figs on it. Man, I don't know what I'm going to do. What's wrong with that tree? I'll tell you about that tree. That tree makes me mad. I just don't think, I don't like that tree. No, no, no. Jesus spoke to the tree. And he said, no man will eat fruit of you, you hereafter forever. He cursed that tree with his words. 24 hours later, as they're walking by, the disciples said, Master, look, the tree which you cursed has withered away from the roots up. 
So when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, it began working in the root system in the invisible realm already. When you are decreeing the word, when you're decreeing increase, when you're decreeing prosperity, when you're decreeing health for your body, you're speaking to the root of it and it's changing. It's changing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Wealth creation, Tom. I don't know. Uh, so that's why there's, so Tom, yeah, that's, that's why this is happening. I wasn't planning on talking about this. Oh, honestly, I was, this was not, I had something completely different, but he's telling me to talk about wealth creation. You are sons of God. You are daughters of God. The creator is in you. The Holy Spirit, the creator is in you. Jesus, the creator is in you. He doesn't want you just getting wealth. He wants you to hear him and create wealth. And very often, failure and loss of jobs and these kind of things is the doorway into your multiplication. It's the doorway into your destiny. I'm telling you, it's the doorway into, into your destiny. You would have stayed limited had that pathway continued. Ha she porasai. I hear the Lord say, I am opening a door. No, that's not what he doors. I am opening doors that no man can shut. And I am shutting doors that no man, including you, can open. Let's see now. Glory to God. I hear the Lord saying it. I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to repeat it. I, the anointing is upon me to repeat it. The prophetic anointing to repeat it. The Lord Jesus is saying by the Spirit to you, I, the Lord Jesus, is saying, I am opening doors that no man can shut for you. And I am closing <laughs> doors that no man can open. So quit trying to open doors that he has shut. Look for the doors he's now opening that no man can shut. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. Hallelujah. Let's go. We're, we're going to jumpstart this. We're going to get into agreement with God on this. Man, oh man, we've moved over into the, the prophetic here. Um, wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. I think that's, uh, I think that's uh, uh, Revelation. Um, is it Revelation 3? Yeah. Let me see here. Um, does anybody know where that verse is? I need you. I need your help, JSM. Where is that verse? I know. I know, Megan. It's awesome. I'm missing your, your comments. I'm opening a door. Where is that? I need to know where that is. I thought it was 320, but I'm not seeing. Um, I'm not seeing it there. So let me just glance through this because I really want us to act on it. I really want us to speak it. If not, I can do it pure, from pure memory uh, if I need to. Let me see. Well, I'm not seeing it. Um, anyway, the Lord's saying this, and, and uh, it's a prophetic word. You can act on it. That he is opening doors. The Lord is opening doors no man can shut right now for you, and he's closing doors. Pay attention to that that no man can open. So there's doors that are going to shut, and it wasn't the devil. It was not the devil shutting the door, and you're going to need to have discernment to know when it's the Lord and when it's the devil. All right? Uh, but even if a door is shut by the enemy, Jesus knows how to open a door that no man can shut. No man can shut the door. No man can shut the door. There are doors opening to you that no human being can shut. That is worth shouting about. Praise God. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yep. Here it is. It's uh, Revelation 3.8. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Terry and Carlos. Thank you so much. And the rest of you, that uh, you're just flashing past so fast. All right, this is the message to the Church of Philadelphia. And, uh, and uh, before I read this, in Revelation 3, 13, at the end of this message to the Church of Philadelphia, the Church of Brotherly Love, Jesus says to you and me, 
He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Listen, he's not just talking to this church 2,000 years ago. He's talking to you right now. <clears throat> Here's what he said. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, to the messenger, the pastor, the apostle, to the church of Philadelphia, he who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David. Woo! The key. Keys open doors. Keys open doors supernaturally. He who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one will open. I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut because you have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Be behold, listen, the Lord's talking to you, not to these people back then. This is a word to you right now. Jesus says, behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan, Satan's group, those that are led by the devil, whether it's your employer or whatever it is, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they're Jews and are not, but lie, I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them know that I have loved you. He's gonna cause the enemies of Jesus, those that are listening to the devil, he's causing them to come and bow at your feet and he's going to make them know that he loves you. Wow. That's what God's doing right now. Do you hear me? Do you hear this prophetic word? Do you hear God speaking? Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I will also keep you from the hour of testing, that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to what you have. Don't let anybody take your crown. Don't let anyone take your authority. Don't anyone, don't let anyone take the revelation that you are a royal priesthood. You are a king. You are a priest. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. I know the one who is holy. I know the one who is true. Christ in me has the key of David. He is opening and no one will shut. God is shutting and no one will open. I'm telling you, God's shutting doors. No one's able to open them and he's opening doors for you and no one is able to shut it. There's opportunity coming to you by the by the, by the Spirit of God, by the favor of God, open doors, but listen to what he's saying. Revelation comes, ideas come, and you become a wealth creator, okay? That's the way you gotta do it. It's the Lord, it's God in you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory, all right? That's the favor of God purchased for you by the blood of Jesus. That's the favor of God that's on your life. That's the position he's put you in. He has, he has set you up to go where he wanted you to go all along. Now, I want to say this because uh, we got to persevere with the word of God. I, I want to say that because, and this just came up by the Spirit of God. Acts chapter 8, remember, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach. Remember, he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes is baptized, be saved. He that believes not will be damned. All right, go into all the world and preach the gospel. But do you know, all the way up to Acts chapter 8, they didn't go. They stayed in Jerusalem. He said, I've given you the Holy Spirit. The power of God's coming upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And here it is, Acts chapter 8, and they haven't left Jerusalem. They haven't even gone to Judea, to the next county, so to speak. They haven't gone to Samaria. And so watch what happens. Acts 8.1, Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death. Saul was the one there to see Stephen persecuted, the first martyr. 
And on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Listen to me. They were supposed to go by the leading of the Holy Spirit into Judea and Samaria. They were dragging their feet. And so great persecution comes. I'm not saying God did it, but because their dra- great persecution comes and they're forced to go to Judea, they're forced to go to Samaria to fulfill the calling and the mandate. I am not say God is doing this, but I'm saying that God is shutting doors right now because those doors that you've been in, those, those comfort zones you've been in, are beneath God's plan for you. They're way beneath what God has for you. They are so beneath. This is not a demotion. This is a promotion. Glory to God. He's shutting doors, just like this group here, that, that massive persecution sent them into their destiny. Doors of Jerusalem shut. They were so persecuted. The doors in Jerusalem shut, but the doors to Judea, ha, 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 ha. And Samaria opened. Glory to God. Man, it's powerful. This is so powerful. Say it again. God is opening doors that no man can shut. And shutting doors that no man can open. That's the word of today. That's the word for today. Now, we only got a couple of minutes. I want to I say this from Job 22, 28. We're going to jumpstart this. And uh, so today's... Today's jump start was Revelation 3, 7, and 8. All right, that is the revelation. That was the prophetic word for today. Now, Job twenty-two twenty-eight 28 says, You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. Let me say it again. Job twenty-two twenty-eight. Some of you take notes. Job twenty-two twenty-eight. You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. Let's read the opposite. So you don't declare a thing, and you refuse to declare a thing, and it won't be established for you, and darkness will shine on your ways, and there'll be no light. Man, do you hear this? What a revelation. You also will declare a thing. It didn't say you'll pray. You'll pray for God to do something. No, no, no. He says you declare it. Get into the word. You will declare a thing. And what will happen? When you declare the word of God over your life and you stay with it day after day, you've got to be hungry. You've got to want this. Man, you've got to want this to work. You've got to get, you've got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I'm, talking, I'm not speaking sickness, but that's a phrase. You have got to come to the end of yourself where you're tired of just surviving. You're not a survivor. You're more than a conqueror. You're not a victim. You're a victor. You got to be tired of being the victim. You got to tired of being holding the holding pattern. Man. Amen. So, uh, and it will be established for you and then light will shine on your ways. When you decree the word, when you declare the word, it's established. Light is revelation. Then revelation knowledge comes to show you supernaturally how what you just decreed is going to come to pass. When you begin to decree, I create wealth for others. And when I create wealth for others through my gifts and talents, I create wealth for myself. I am a wealth-creating being. When you decree that, light will begin to shine on your ways so that you begin to see the supernatural path to bring it to pass. It's not going to happen in a day. It could. It might happen in a moment. It could. But if you'll begin to decree the word of God, get on the positive side, get off the negative side, get off the passive side, get on the, get on the active side of this. Light will begin to shine. Light shines into your mind and heart to show you how to walk out and cause it to come to pass. The thing you decree. Say this out loud. I will also decree and declare a thing and it will be established for me so light is shining on my ways say it again I will also declare a thing and it will be established for me so light is shining on my ways ha glory glory ah ha 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 Say it out loud. I am a king 
and where the word of a king is, there's power. Amen. Love you guys. Totally out of left field for me. This is not at all what I had planned, what I prayed through, what I thought we were going to talk about. I didn't know we were going to talk about wealth creation. God commands you to be fruitful. That's, that's wealth. Multiply. That's multiply wealth. Be fruitful, multiply, and dominate the earth. Wow, that's God's plan for you. Love you guys. We're not victims, we're victors. Hallelujah. See you tomorrow, 9 o'clock. I may have a guest with me tomorrow. Have a great day. Make sure you share this.